Hi, I'm Nathaniel, and in this project, I make a motor controller using an FPGA. So why am I doing this project? I'm currently undertaking a Bachelor of Engineering Mechatronics at UTS. One of my courses, Mechatronics 1, offered me the opportunity to design my own FPGA assignment as part of their extension program, Unleashed. I personally find extra motivation when I can see the practical application of projects, and as such, I've decided to find a use case in a project I'm involved with at work. The Center for Autonomous Systems Autonomous Mobility Scooter Project, designed to aid the research of autonomous systems in pedestrian environments, fits the bill perfectly. I'd been tasked with specking and implementing a steering system, which needed the ability to interface with the onboard computer system. To accomplish this, I will need a motor controller that can be input a desired and current steering angle from the computer system, outputting the control to the hardware. As I've had limited experience with motor controllers in the past, I see this as a great opportunity to both learn about and develop a project with real-world application. For this project, I use the FPGA as the motor logic controller and master node to the other peripheral subsystems. Due to the limitation of the FPGA being able to only predictably read digital signals, I use an Arduino as the interface between analog devices, such as the encoder that provides feedback of the current angle. The Arduino also acts as a simulation of the computer system that will be interfaced, passing the desired steering angle and receiving feedback control of the decisions made by the FPGA. To simulate the physical hardware of the scooter, I've used steering hardware from a previous unrelated project I had undertaken as part of the UTS Robotic Society. This provided me with the visual confirmation of the controls decisions and allowed me to demonstrate the controller to the class. Looking at the system in overview, everything starts in standby. This standby state is determined by my mode selection block, which by default holds the clock high until a predetermined sequence is input. This sequence recognizer takes the input from two hardware buttons present on the FPGA. The sequence recognizer waits for the valid input of three ones before latching the output high. This removes the clock inhibit, allowing the clock to pulse and the system to progress. At any time, resetting the FPGA or pressing the standby input button moves the system into the standby state and control of the motors is disabled. The FPGA operates at 50 MHz, while an Arduino Uno operates at 16 MHz. To enable reliable communication between the two devices, a shared clock at a suitable frequency needs to be generated. I accomplish this by making a clock divider on the FPGA, inputting the onboard 50 MHz clock and outputting multiple reduced frequencies. This allows for easy reuse throughout the project, for example, in the button debouncer. The reduced frequency is achieved by sequentially stacking D flip-flops, which reduces their individual input frequency by two. To facilitate communication between the FPGA and Arduino, I originally decided to implement parallel communication, using each input-output pin as one bit. This quickly proved to be cumbersome, as the amount of required pins and wires would become a problem. Instead of this, I chose to use serial communication protocol, called SPI. This allows the FPGA to communicate using four wires, a shared clock, a serial select line, a master out slave in, and a master in slave out. I used an 8-bit SPI implementation, passing 8 bits of data from the FPGA while simultaneously reading 8 bits from the Arduino. SPI required me to serialize the data being passed to the Arduino and make parallel the data being passed back in. To serialize the data, I made a parallel in serial out block. This parallel in serial out 
loads 8 bits simultaneously and then proceeds to shift each bit to the next D flip-flop on each clock pulse. The bits are loaded using the set function and output to the next serial input shift register. The output of the final bit shifter represents the entire input that was loaded after 8 clock pulses. To read the serial data from the Arduino, I made a serial in parallel out block. This serial in parallel out reads the serial data into chained flip flops for 8 bits and then shifts those to a storage register, allowing the storage register to be read, providing the entire 8 bit sequence until cleared or 8 new bits have been stored. Moving into the bang bang control mode, the desired steering angle and current steering angle are compared to calculate the direction the steering should be turned. I took the subtraction of the desired angle from the current angle, producing a positive or negative sign. This sign is the indication of the direction and was passed as the most significant bit on the master out slave in line, back to the Arduino. The desired and current steering angles were received from the Arduino using two master in slave out lines and were read from the corresponding serial in parallel outs. Looking at P control, this mode builds off the bang bang calculation, producing a proportional control value. This is achieved by taking the difference produced by the subtraction of the desired and current angles and dividing it by a number to produce a number proportional to the change required. This value could be used to scale velocity, or in the case of the demonstration, on a servo it can be used to pick a position in between the final desired position simulating velocity control. To enable this mode, an input button on the FPGA is used to override bang bang mode. I use the second most significant bit on the master out slave in to indicate P control override to the Arduino and the last six bits as the calculated P value. Some things to note. Due to me writing my own implementation of SPI on the Arduino, the communication to the FPGA would occasionally bit shift by one. This I believe is caused by interrupts having slight delays and overlapping. This causes undesired results. I tested this by writing a more streamlined version of my Arduino code and the issue reduced somewhat. Also to note, reading 8 bits of data in allowed me to pass the steering angle as two 4-bit digits. This was chosen to enable me to display the received data on the FPGA using the 7-segment display very quickly before building out more advanced features. This presented the challenge that it limited the available range within 0 and 99 degrees. For my application, this is not an issue, but it could have been if there were a different maximum angle requirement. Another thing to note was due to time constraints, I decided to have two master in slave out lines to pass the two required angles simultaneously instead of rewriting my 8-bit implementation into a 16-bit implementation. Finally to note, the FPGA operates on 3.3 volt logic, while the Arduino operates on 5 volt logic. Thus, to allow the two devices to interface with each other, I needed to use a logic level converter to provide each device with the logic voltage they require. Using the knowledge I have picked up over the course of this project, if I was to start the project again, there are a few things I would do differently. One would be to pass serial information in accordance with the standard communication protocol instead of stipulating my own. This would allow me to make full use of the available bits by performing the processing on either end instead of sending 4-bit digits. Another would be to use the hardware SPI on the Arduino instead of writing my own version using interrupts. This should eliminate the bit shifting issue mentioned before and allow me to achieve higher frequency communications. Taking this project further, 
I would love to be able to implement PD and PID controller modes. That would further build on the knowledge I've gained so far.